Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bikini in the Brain with the lovely Ashley Kaltwasser. Hi. <laughs> I just love it so much. I know you do. <laughs> I know. What do we have? What do we have on the docket today, Ashley? On the docket. Let's talk about staying satiated. So we have Thanksgiving coming up, so I think this is perfect timing to talk about how to stay full and satisfied. Yes. Now you've done a little bit um You've done a video kind of similar to what we're talking about before, but I plan on going into more depth today about it. So explain how your previous video about satiation was a big hit. I know a lot of people loved it. Yeah, it was really cool um, diving into the, like that topic <laughs> of it because, and it was funny, I was talking, it was funny, is this, this stemmed something that, uh, this stupid idea I had too, and I'll tell you guys about it. It's really, it's, so, is it the bean? <laughs> it's the bean thing, but it's, oh, I don't think I'm going to do the bean thing. I tried it for like, it's, okay, let's go. For 12 with. hours? <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's no way, there's no way. It's, it's like digestion, it's a digestion thing more than anything. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> all right, so I was looking at the, looking in depth as, uh, to uh, sa satiation, you know, and what, helps with satiation, how hard it is to be satiated. And I have a, I, I do think I have a disadvantage and I think that you do a little bit have a disadvantage too, because we've both been doing this for a long time and we both are kind of that, like we, we're good because we have the same mindset. We're kind of like suck it up mindset and it is what it is, you know, type of mindset. And we're just like, whatever you're on a diet, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Chicken's life. That's just how it goes, you know? But so it's for me, I've been doing this since I was 12 years old. Like like sitting on a clean diet, like staying on a clean diet, eating healthy is what I called it when I was like younger. Um, and so it's really hard for me to relate to the struggles that other people have with, you know, being hungry or whatever. Cause me, when I was bodybuilding, I was just like, I was just embrace it. You know, that's bodybuilding. It sucks. Like sometimes it's just going to be hungry. It is what it is. And then I started looking at this, like, said, okay, how can, um, maybe it's, that's just a me thing. And maybe that's, you know, obviously it's just a me thing. And there's, a lot of people who do struggle with this or else we, we wouldn't have this constant issue of off season weight rebounding, that type of thing. So, okay, what's the best way to resolve this with still keeping people uh, lean, you know? And so I was like, well, maybe we got to look at hunger. Maybe we got to look at the, that actual thing a little closer. What can we do to at least maybe resolve some of those? I'm so hungry, you know, cause I get those emails. You get those emails too, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Like, what do you do I'm, when, you're, when it's late at night and I'm like a little hunger monster, right? <laughs> That's your term, huh? <laughs> hunger monster. Hunger monster, yeah. I commented that hunger monster. It's uh, I like that term. You like it? It's kind of cute, hunger right? Monster. A little hunger monster when you get home. And it's funny is most people are are good all day long, and then they get home, and then they're just like, yeah. you know, the monster comes out. You know, uh -oh. <laughs> it's like a, it's like Incredible Hulk. You know, they just like he just comes. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so so um. Basically, we're looking at, okay, what are, what are some ways where we can keep people from being so hungry, right? There's obvious, there's the obvious ones, you know, eat more vegetables, you know, which is who wants to really do that? You know, I personally, me, I like broccoli. Well, hey, if you're truly hung, if this is actual hunger and not a craving, then it should do the job. Yeah, it should. It which really we'll should. get into that with the differences, but yeah. go ahead, go ahead. So, yeah, so there's more, <laughs> there's so much research. I was actually surprised to see how much, um, people have dove into the topic of this. And so <laughs> she loves the dive. You got to be careful with the dive because she does the dive motion. Every, every time he says let's <laughs> dive or dove. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like the jet when we we're in Japan and there was the, what was that? Family Mart. Family Mart. Family Mart. <laughs> let's all go to Family Mart. Baby. She had this thing in, in <laughs> Japan where every time we'd pass one, she'd have to sing and dance to yeah, that song. They're everywhere. They're like our 7-Elevens, but, but then, more. Yeah. And then we realized how many of them there were in Japan. She did, it, they, she did it like 70 plus times at least. By the end, you legit like, got annoyed. <laughs> like was, at the be in, in the first ones, like you were like all for it and doing them with me. We had like a little choreography dance and everything with the Family Mart. And then by the end, you're just like, there was no. like 80 of them. There was so many. And then sometimes there'd be one at the beginning of the block and one at the end of the block. <laughs> it's just saturated out there with family marts. So um, <laughs> that was a fun time though. So, okay. So satiation and um, some of the things they did. So one of the things that they found with satiation was that people were confusing hydration with hunger. Yes. And that happens big time in the winter because we don't drink as much in the winter. Really? That's a thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Okay. I mean, think Makes about sense. it. When you go outside and it's 96 oh, degrees, yeah. 
you're going to drink more just even if you're not sweating you just want to cool yourself down yeah. but now in the winter time it's like even if you drink room temperature things it does lower your body temperature a little bit it seems yeah. like so i mean i drink more tea in the winter time but i know i drink more for sure in the summer maybe that's why you one other reason why you do so well on the diet because you do drink so much water too maybe that's another thing because she drinks she actually drinks so much water um that the that the, i that i go through i spend half my paycheck on toilet paper <laughs> I can't. I'm looking for that toilet paper sponsor. I wonder how the girls' bathroom goes through so much toilet paper here. You know, like, you girls are fast. I know. If me and me and Arthur have like two rolls a month. Dude, yeah, <laughs> like, and female fitness competitors. You know, we're drinking a lot of fluids. We're not eco friendly. The girls' bathroom. Here, I feel. I put a brand new roll in before posing class on Saturday. One of them was gone by the end of posing class. That was class. me. All <laughs> it's like, what are they? Is it like rich in amino acids and girls aren't telling? me about this and they're just like <laughs> nibbling oh on it through God. in between <laughs> like what's going on here so much toilet paper in the, in the uh, girls bathroom has gotten it so f what sucks is i never go in there so i don't know when things are out yeah and so i just yeah so anyway another story <laughs> i was under the sinks this weekend like fixing fixing uh the sinks and whatnot but anyway back to satiation okay so a lot of times people are confusing uh hunger with hydration i guess there was a study out showing that most people are dehydrated to some capacity. It was a 70, it was around 70%. I forget that one exactly. It was around 70% of people are somewhat underhydrated, somewhat dehydrated, right? Mm -hmm. So that's crazy when you think about, you know, bodybuilders and how much we sweat already, especially when you're in prep and you're sweating so much in prep. You're And if you're drinking, let's say you're, and this happens to a lot of my athletes alone too, because I always give the rule of thumb for, for water as one ounce per pound. So if you're a 200 pound bodybuilder, 200 ounces. If you're a 120 pound bikini competitor, 120 ounces, right? So when they're in their off season and it's winter time, you know, they're drinking 120 ounces. When they live in, let's say Las Vegas or Arizona or somewhere really hot, right? And it's summertime and they're in prep and they're sweating way more than the normal amount because they're doing, you know, 45 minutes or so of cardio and they're outside more because it's, it's hot. They're still drinking 120 ounces, right? Mm -hmm. The different levels of hydration for someone in those two scenarios is going to be completely different, right? And so is it part of them being super, super hungry that they're in prep or is part of it to them being just not being hydrated as much? Right. It's a good argument, right? That's probably, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure it's both, but um, that just shows you, you now that's a, that's a big thing. So one of the tips was, okay, um, drink water, preload, they call it preloading water. So drink water before you eat eat your veggies bef like as first before you eat right so eat those things first so two glasses of water then your veggies and then you'll kind of feel like how really hungry you are at that point mm -hmm. right so that's that's an option i don't know if you have any on your things that you've done for for that if you have any tips on stuff that you've done for that so yeah i mean i, I definitely do that um i i also thinking about afterwards as well i think sometimes our taste buds are behind our stomachs if that makes sense so meaning we might actually be full but our taste buds want more right so you might f you might not even notice how full you are because your <laughs> taste buds are like mm, this tastes good i want some more you know so i think it's important to eat slow and to listen to your hunger cues like be like you know what oh i am i am getting a little full but um Another thing you can do as well after you have a meal, either choose sugar-free gum or brush your teeth because that's going to cut off any of those like further cravings. Like, you know how I just mentioned that your taste buds are behind your stomach and they want more even though your stomach maybe doesn't. Um, that's going to kind of like signal to your taste buds, okay, we're done. And think about it. If you have like a super minty piece of gum or if you just brush your teeth, you're probably not going to want that taste right? Yeah. Because mint mixed with potatoes and gravy doesn't sound too good, does it? You know? Yeah. So um, that's something that I do. And I find that it's super helpful. And I also floss and everything like that. So just kind of clearing the palate and just making sure your taste buds are like cut off. Okay, you're cut off, you yeah. know? So then after that, if you're still hungry, that's a different story. But I think, um, you know, a lot of this is mental. And um, going off of what I just previously mentioned, uh, it's important to realize that there is a difference between hunger and a craving. You know, there are differences. So if you're truly, actually hungry, you're going to feel that physical 
hunger, right? Your stomach might be growling. You might feel a little weak, a little lightheaded. Um, you might feel like a little bit like kind of like sick, you know, if you're truly hungry. And if you're truly hungry, you will eat vegetables, right? Because listen, if you get hungry enough, you start eating people, right? <laughs> <If you're, laughs> you know, and think about it. <laughs> it's actually true. But, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure if I got to the point where I was actually hungry enough, I would eat fish. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. That's an equivalent of people for you. Exactly. Like, <laughs> you, might do pe- you might do people first. No, oh goodness. <laughs> but I mean, that's obviously an extreme case. But if we're thinking like a daily hunger thing, if you are truly actually hungry, you will eat vegetables. Because at that point, it's like, I just need to get food in, right? Yeah. So that's something to note. So before you give in to those uh, cookies, and everything because you say you're hungry, that's a, that's a craving. Because like I just said, if you're hungry, you'll eat chicken and vegetables, extra vegetables, right? Because yeah, that's a good point. you just need to fill that stomach up, okay? So if we're thinking about a craving, though, that's mm-hmm. different. Cravings are oftentimes fueled by emotion, okay? Fueled by emotion, okay? So think about, like, anytime you were upset or frustrated or whatever, you might be like, mm, I'm in a bad mood, I just, you know, I want to have, I want to have, chocolate. Okay. Anything that's a craving. Okay. So it's kind of like you're usually, if you're having craving, you're wanting comfort foods like sweets or fat. Um, and you know, just, just realize that you can overcome these cravings. It does pass with time. Okay. So it's something that you kind of have to train yourself to be like, okay, before I give in, is there a better option here? Can I do something that's not going to hinder my progress? Can I, if if I eat something right now, is this going to make me feel guilty later? Because, you know, when you give in to these cravings for bad foods, it's like, yeah, it tastes good for five minutes, and then, then you feel guilty for the rest of the day yeah. or a week, depending, right? So before you give in to cravings, you got to realize, wait a minute, is this hunger or is this craving? If it's craving, I can deal with it. If it's hunger, I can deal with it. You just got to deal with it in certain ways. And, you know, a lot of times we can deal with these cravings simply by, you know, the miracles of uh, diet foods that we have these days. Like we went over in our last podcast, there's many solutions. Like you can, you know, I, for example, if I'm craving something sweet, you know what I'll do? I'll do something like, um, I'll have my crystal light, my, my sugar-free Skittles drink, some diet root beer. I'll even do stevia cucumbers or whatever. Um, if I'm craving something savory, it's something different, right? So maybe I'll do like kale chips or something or something that's more salty. Um, but just know that there there is a big difference between the two, between hunger and craving. And if you're hungry, like I mentioned, add an extra vegetables. You know what I do is I always keep extra like shredded lettuce in the fridge and extra vegetables um, around. Even even at my desk here, I keep a bag of like riced cauliflower. It's the non-perishable kind. It comes in a bag. Like just in case, like if I'm having one of those hungry days or whatever, and I'm like, oh man, I just, you know, I have my meal here, but it just, I know this isn't going to fill me up enough. You can add it in, right? Because it's much better to fill yourself up with extra vegetables now rather than give in to something worse later, right? So letting that hunger accumulate, in my opinion, can lead to other bad choices. So I don't know about you, but no one's no one that I know has gotten fat from extra asparagus, <laughs> you know? So yeah. if you are going to have extra food, make sure it's something that's not um, high in calories. So vegetables are perfect. Shred yeah. lettuce, asparagus, things like that. I mean, obviously there's vegetables that are a little more calorie dense, but we try to stay away from those calorie dense ones and keep the more, you know, like greens. And yeah. Stuff, so, and one of the good veggies too is um, broccoli, broccoli, mm-hmm. cauliflowers. And so, and the reason that that one is so good is it's harder, it's hard for the body to digest yes. that too. So mm-hmm. the, the net calories of broccoli is close to about half the calories listed because of the fibers in it, how hard it is for the body to digest it. And so that's one of the things, and I always go, I go back and forth with like macro dieting people and stuff too. And I do, I think there's a lot of great options for macro dieting. Like on my diets, I don't have macro diets, but I have a lot of options on the diet. So it's not just chicken and broccoli. It's, you know, 
five different meats. Oops, sounds. Oh my that god, you? sorry. <laughs> I did that it before. It wasn't. <laughs> the crickets came up. It was a little boring. Oh okay, Ashley, god, I get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I went to put my phone down in it. <laughs> so the uh, with broccoli, um, it's about fifty percent of the calories that are listed on the broccoli. But so as far as I was going into macro dieting, so macro dieting I think has a lot of serves a lot of purpose for getting that um, taste out of your mouth, you know, type of thing. Um, but the net calories are going to be different for different foods. So you know, I always say, you know, broccoli if it says seventy calories, the net calories are let's say it's thirty five. That's not the exact math. Um, but if you did 70 calories of, let's say a, whatever, a, a orange juice, it's going to be about 70 calories. So the, the difference is on the plate and outside the body is different than inside the body. And that's why, um, when we're using precise data, we make adjustments on our meal plans, like every 10, like 10, 15% adjustments on like a weekly basis on a big one, maybe 20%, but usually it's like in that small micro progression range. And so if we don't have the accurate data where the foods can even be off by 50% net calories, it makes it really difficult to make a 10% adjustment. So that's why I'm not huge on macro dieting, but I do think there's a time and place for it. Off season, um, if some people need a macro meal per day, like one meal a day, do whatever you want, I think it's great. I say mm -hmm. no problem. If you're, if you're struggling to stick to your menu plan and that's what it is, it's a craving thing like Ashley's talking about. Um, I think that that's a great option and you could talk to your coach about maybe one meal per day. I do a macro meal and I eat whatever I want for one meal per day and the rest of them, at least you still have the data and really I feel like that's enough. That's enough freedom, right? Like yes. in the diet, like if I can eat whatever, a Chick-fil-A sandwich once a day or something like that should be enough if I'm serious about bodybuilding, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like I, and the rest of it's chicken and whatever. Yeah. Okay, I think that's very fair. So especially in like an off season scenario and then maybe one free meal a week where it's like a thousand calories or something. I think that if you're complaining after that, I'm sorry, I don't got any help for you. Like might not be the sport for you, you know? Um, so, but the going into, again, um, let's go more into the satiation thing. So like mm -hmm. little tricks. So we talked about, uh, you know, little tricks on the, the video I posted earlier. So some of these will be repeating. Um, but what's really cool about the, another study they had was they had, okay, this is really interesting. Um, this is a really interesting study. Okay. So they had basically a open bar, like a, like a buffet, like a buffet, not open bar, buffet, a buffet. And one group of people had uh, rich foods that were higher in fats that were, um, you know, high calorie, low dense foods, right? And then the other group had a buffet that was um, high volume, low calorie dense foods, right? So it was carbs and stuff that were, um, you know, more volume, right? So it'd be like popcorn as a carb and things like that, where it's, you know, a lot of volume, but low calories, right? So what they found was that the the people who did the study, the people who were in the group, on average, ate the same amount of weight on each one. So let's, let's say it was like 500 grams of food, right? Something crazy, right? 500 grams of food on both sides, right? They both ate 500 grams of food, but the people who ate the fat and the high calorie, low dense foods ate significantly more calories, but both were satiated at the same amount of volume in terms of weight, mm -hmm. right? In terms of mm -hmm. grams of food. So basically, it's like your stomach doesn't know what it's filling up with to be full, but um, the higher calorie ones ate more calories because of the density of calories? Yeah, Is because the vo the total yeah. volume was so much more for the grams I of gotcha. weight, right? Mm, okay. Isn't that crazy? So it is crazy. Yeah, so to, to make it easy, they both ate one pound of food. One one pound of food was like, you know, let's say 3,000 calories, and one one pound of food was 1,000 calories. Mm. They're both full at one pound of food, basically, right? Okay. So that's basically that's how. Interesting. It, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So it shows you a lot that okay, not just am I am I hungry? Maybe my diet's not the right diet for me. Yeah. You know, maybe my volume isn't high enough. Maybe I need to add some different carbs in or some different choices in that are more calorie dense. Maybe, you know, this is a conversation you have with your coach or something. You know, um, our on my our our plans our plans, we have all the carbs. We have different choices on the carbs. Mm -hmm. So it's like you get a carb and it's, it's like white rice, potato. Uh, there's, there's just like a bunch of different options, right? So maybe you're going to do um, rice cakes instead of rice because it's more volume for you, right? It takes longer. It's more effort. It feels like you're eating for longer. Maybe you're going to do popcorn instead of white rice. You know, cream of rice is very low volume food. Maybe you don't do cream of rice anymore. Maybe you do, um, you know, popcorn again, right? Or, or, you know, just, a, just white rice instead of cream of rice. It's more, it feels like more volume. 
So these little tricks that you could do to make you more full throughout the day. Another one was uh, that they found that it had people eat less or feel more full was protein shakes. You know, everyone mm-hmm. uses a protein shake and they put it in their shaker cup and they just go like this and they drink it, right? Well, they found that if you were to blend a protein shake because there's more air in the protein mm. shake, they were a lot fuller with the blended protein shake. And how much more effort does it really take to blend versus, yeah. you know, versus shake? Shoot, and throw in some xanthan gum and you're set. Exactly. You know, that's make a it, great trick. Yeah, which maybe that's why, like, beverages like the one you're having, like a carbonated beverage, can be almost a little filling because yeah, of the air bubbles. Too, yeah. That's kind of cool. That's good to note. See, there's there's solutions to these things. You yeah. just got to be aware. I, you got to think before you give in, you know, just – Take five minutes and think before you give in. Yeah. There's better options. So it's, and it's, and it's one is if you're struggling with hunger, you keep going off your prep diet. Is it the diet itself, right? So let's go back into that research that we talked about a little bit. Is it the diet itself? Okay. Let's say your coach, and I've, I've been on this myself, so I'm not going to bash any coaches, but maybe you are a, you're working with like a coach who's like really keto and you're like, I'm going to do keto because keto has all these advantages or whatever. Right. And on, and on paper, there are some advantages to it. I won't deny that. I went through keto phase. Um, I did keto myself for, I don't remember how long. It was a long time. It was months and months. Um, I did keto. I like and it was keto. Just, I don't mind it. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Um, and it was just easy, especially when I was traveling a lot, you know, because that was when Ashley was living in LA and I was in Denver and we'd always be like at each other's places. It was just easy. I could go outside and go to Ashley's like, they're downstairs. There was like a, a Whole Foods or something, right? Was it? Under Trader your, Joe's. Trader Joe's. And I just grab a thing of cheese. And I was like, that's easy. I remember getting you cheese. <laughs> Yeah, I have, a, I have a fridge full of cheeses. So like that was easy to be keto and travel and things, you know, just get some get some deli store meat and some cheese and that's your meal. It was super easy. So that was easy while traveling. So there was that advantage of it. it it's a lot harder to find, you know, grilled breast and, and, and cooked white rice. And, you know, um, but I will give you a tip, guys. Actually, let me give you a, a prep tip. Uh, Chinese food restaurants, like the small Chinese food restaurants, like the independently owned Chinese food restaurants, if you're in prep and you're somewhere... They will, they, every single one of them I've ever been to has no problem with giving you steamed veggies, steamed white rice, and steamed chicken, which is, you know, steamed chicken is not the best, but at least you know it's, it is what it is. It's steamed chicken breast. None of them have issues. It's all cut up for you, and it's like the easiest thing. So if you're like in a town for just a day or something, like mm-hmm. you're on business travel, I would always say go to a grocery store, look for the rotisserie chickens, or go to the Chinese food places and go there and get your veggies, chicken. And it's always super cheap, too. They give you so many veggies. They're like, yeah, five bucks. So I'm like, how? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a, good, a good hack there for you guys that are traveling. But mm. anyway, back to the, uh, the keto diet, right? So let's say you're working with the keto coach, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And, and then you're always really hungry on it, right? And the, the, the coach is constantly like, just, just give it a few weeks. It'll turn around. It'll stop. Your body will get used to it. Your body will get used to it. A lot of times what happens when I was doing keto, and this is why I don't do it so much anymore, was the first part of having someone on keto was always the hardest part. The first like 10 days because they were starving. The volume was a lot lower because a true keto diet is really high in fat. It's very high in fat. It's medium protein to, to low protein and like zero carbs. That's, that's like our true keto diet. It's like 70% fats, 25% proteins, 5% carbs. That's like a real, a true keto diet. Bodybuilding keto diet, you tend to get a little bit off on the numbers. It tends to be like 55, 60, like 30, 35, 10, right? Something like that. But uh, the true keto diet, if you're doing the true keto coach, it's going to be closer to that 70, 25, 5. So what what I found was, yeah, once people got in keto, they got great results because they were in the zone at that point. And any caloric deficit, when they're in the zone, they're going to get great results. So I don't necessarily know if it was a keto advantage or if it was just that they were adhering to the diet. But here's the problem that you run into. When someone would cheat on the keto diet, they'd have that one day, they'd finally oh, give in. It messes up your keto. It's a whole, yeah, it's yeah. another, it's another 10 days to you get them back like, into it. Yeah, it's it's like, not even just like, oh, I backtracked like two days. It's like, no, you, yeah. <laughs> you, messed, you messed up for weeks. <laughs> yeah, we have to go through that whole <laughs> thing again. You're going to go through the hunger. You're going to go through the withdrawals. I mean, of course, yeah. it depends on how many carbs you eat. If you eat one right. carb meal after being keto for three months, it's not going to do that. But oh. But usually it's not how it goes. Usually once people give in, it'd be like, I really messed up. I was at a friend's birthday and I just did damage, right? I just did the whole thing, right? So on a regular diet, you don't run into that. You have a bad day and it might mess up a week. It might mess up a week, but you're not going to be like significantly craving something. You're not to reset and start producing ketones again. It's not like that bad. It's just like, okay, you ate 2000 calories too much. We didn't make progress this week. We'll make progress next week. That type of thing, right? It's, it's, it's a different scenario. So um, that's what I ran into. So 
if you're on that diet and you're saying, I'm really hungry, well, maybe it's the volume of the food is so low because you got to remember fat is so calorie dense that you're not going to get much volume with a high fat keto diet. It's just not possible to eat, let's say 1500 calories and 70% of that being fat and it being a high volume food. Like there's not a high volume fat out there, right? It's just fat. It's like, you know, there's just, it's just not, unless it's attached to something, right? It's just, if a pure fat, it's just, I mean, you're looking, it's like oil, <laughs> you know, it's right. oil, butters, you know, things like that. So it's just not possible. And so if that's where you're struggling, maybe that's not the best diet for you. And that's maybe that's why you're not adhering, you know, you got to look at your diet format. Mm -hmm. Maybe, um, I find that protein's really satiating for people too. Um, and then maybe it's, you know, the, the, the kind of protein that you're eating too could be a, could be a factor in it. So, um, you know, I find that people that eat, um, low fat, like ground, uh, low fat ground turkey, like 99% low fat ground turkey, they get obviously more volume because there's less fat in it. Right. So they have a more, more total volume of meat because there's lower in fat. They, if they're struggling with being hungry, I feel like giving them more total meat versus let's say, um, like a chicken thigh, where it's going to be a lot of calories in a smaller amount. Um, they, they get more full because they just get more total meat and then they can eat their fat separately than that, than the meat. So that's an option too. things like that. So, um, yeah, but that's, that's, it's kind of interesting to look at total volume, total weight, um, and how it actually impacts your hunger. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's kind of cool. So, um, question for you, Adam, from a hormonal standpoint, um, now what causes the, the release of ghrelin, I believe is the, the hunger hormone, correct? Yes. Yeah, so now like what causes an abundance of that in the body, or is that something that you can't control at all? Well, it's so you got to look at the hormones on what they are, right? They're it's essentially when people are talking about like starvation mode and, mm -hmm. and you know, that's so starvation mode is not like a real thing, right? It's not like your body's like churned into full starving mode. Like it just flicks a button. And you, all of a sudden you're in starvation mode, right? But these are just signs that you're, these are, these are hormones your body's produced to kind of keep you alive though, right? So if you are, let's, so let's look at a good way to put this as an example. Let's look at Let's look at, and I like this one too, because custom auto uses this. Um, let's look at fear, right? Mm -hmm. Fear. So it was kind of, this is kind of funny because this was explained to me uh, by a, by an old, a old manager of mine. He's like, he's like, you ever see uh, a four-year-old kid on skis down a slope? And I was like, no. He's like, he's like, they just don't care. They just run down the slope. They just go down full. They, they don't like, unless someone's stopping them, no one's going to like no one's going to, mm -hmm. they're not, they're not going to stop. They're just going to keep going as fast as they possibly can and just do it for as long as they can because they've never been hurt before right. doing that. Right. So that because of that, the fear is not there. Right. So what is fear? Well, fear is um, something to keep us from doing stupid stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we're, when we're afraid, it's usually for our own protection, right? Mm -hmm. Your body just says, you don't do that. It makes you afraid. Everything goes up your heart rate, your this, your that, right. Body's saying, don't do that. You're afraid of that. Right. It's like, you're driving, that's why if you drive at 200 miles per hour, you're like, you're like, you're like panicking to the point where you're like, okay, this is not like, I'm going to, if I keep doing this, I'm going to die. Like you don't feel good doing it. I was in, I was in the back of my friend's car once he was going like 150. And I was like, it's just, you're so out of control because he's doing this and you yeah. have no control over it. You're just like freaking out. Right. And that's, you know, that's fear. Right. So what, so what is that? It's just a survival instinct. Right. So let's, that's the extreme of it. Right. But let's say like leptin and Gerlin, right. We're talking about, um, you know, hunger and satiation, right? So why do we get hungry? Well, we're not eating enough, right? The body's saying, eat, 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 right? Because you're not eating enough. So I need you to eat. It's just like fear. You're going to kill yourself. Be afraid. Don't do that, right? You're not eating enough. You're going to kill us. Eat more, right? Then the satiation kicks in. It's like, okay, I'm good now. That's, you know, so that's, that's the, that's the reasoning behind it, the basics of it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a whole, you know, hormonal thing and things like that from it, but it's basically, you're going to have, that's going to happen. You're going to have spikes, when you're in prep, it's just right. the way it is. Cause you're not eating, you're eating your, anytime your body is basically using fat as a source of energy, mm -hmm. your body realizes, okay, I'm not getting energy from external sources. I don't want to use all this because I need this for later. Cause I might need it to survive. Right. As we always talk about, we always talk about, um, the evolution of humans and how minimally evolved we are since our technology has improved so fast. Right. Mm -hmm. If you look at just that on a, on paper, it's crazy. You know, we used to like just a few decades ago, we'd have to get our own, we'd have to hunt our own meat, right? Like, we're not talking a long time ago. Like, we're talking like the 50s and 40s, right? It's not that long ago. That's like, there's people alive still that were born then, you know, where like it was, you know, it wasn't like it is now. Right? Now, you know, you're at work 
and you just press a button and someone brings your food to you. Like it's, it's, it's crazy how evolved we are. So the body doesn't know that that's happened yet. It doesn't know that there's an abundance of food. It doesn't know that you're going to accidentally eat too much food, right? That's a crazy concept to think about. Like how, how privileged are we, you know, in, in our world where we have to try to eat less. Yeah. That's ridiculous to even say out loud. Like, oh, I have to try to eat less because I'm storing too much food. That's literally what we're doing. <laughs> like, it's crazy, right? So the body doesn't know that we can do that, but that's where we're at right now. It's just like with our, it's great. It's great. We have less people dying of hunger than any ever before. Yeah. So it's awesome that we're there. But mm -hmm. the problem with that is now we have to try on purpose to eat less, yeah. right? But the body hasn't caught up to that. So it doesn't know, okay, hey, this guy's just, you know, Ashley's just dieting. She's not starving. Ashley's poor body thinks that she's been in this frozen famine for the last three years <laughs> doing, doing 50 shows a year. So yeah, she's going to be a little more hungry. But the thing is, as the longer you do it, the more you're going to adapt, the less, the less those things are going to spike. I, I can, I can assure you that's true. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm barely hungry these days. Yeah. If anything, I'm just hungry in the morning. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, almost like, mm, I'm not really hungry, but I know if I don't eat this, before I go to bed, I'm going to wake up hungry. So it's like, you know, I'm very satisfied with my diet. And I really don't, it seems like I, I don't feel as hungry as most people. Yeah. Like I don't. So, Hey, I think it's, it's because I've learned all these tricks and stuff and just knowing like my body and, and realizing what's a craving and what is hunger. But I think, you know, being hungry isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, you should feel the, you know, I think a lot of people are afraid to be hungry, but it's a totally normal thing. And if you think about like, even if we're taking like a 400 pound person, you know, and they're trying to lose weight uh, to get healthy, they are going to feel hungry if they're in that deficit and tapping into those fat stores. That's not a bad thing. So I think a lot of people think like, oh, it's hungry on the diet, like as if it's like, like dangerous, right? Yeah. So obviously there's a big difference between like starving and just being hungry there. It's, it's totally okay to be hungry sometimes. In fact, like, you know, I, I am very much against like force feeding yourself. So even if like something's on my diet and I'm just like, I, I really don't have the appetite for this day. I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm just forcing it down. It's okay to be hungry. Like it's okay. Um, and I just, you know, sometimes you do, you do have to listen to your body and if you're not hungry, don't eat, but it's not the biggest deal just to be hungry sometimes for short periods of time. Okay. If anything, it might be a sign that, Hey, we're getting leaner, right? Yeah. Hey, we're tapping into those fat stores. So it's all how you think of it. You know, yeah. I use, I use my buddy Russ for this example. So sorry, Russ, for always bringing you up, but he's like the, one of the more, most hardcore guys I know, you know, <laughs> like, but he's always like, you know, cause he's, he's a classic pro. Uh, he was a bodybuilding pro, so he just would, the guy just grows like crazy. Like, it's it's crazy how fast this guy could grow muscle. And so he would actually have to diet super hard to make classic weight because he'd actually would physically have to lose muscle to get into that weight class. And so, um, you know, he'd be, we were talking 240-pound guy eating 900 or so calories. Oof. It, dude, I'm, it's crazy. The level of, I like using him as an example because it's like the level of dedication it takes for for that to happen is is a whole nother ball game, right? And he's like, he's like, I just love it. He's like, I love being hungry because that means that I know that my body's eating itself right now. And he's <laughs> like, I know it's eating fat. I know it's working. And that's how I'm going to get to where I want to get to. Yeah. So like I, I flip it as a positive as if, yeah, that's awesome. It means I'm working. It's working. He's like, when I eat and I'm not hungry, I'm like, damn, I'm not losing any fat right now. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, when he's in prep, of course. But right. it's like, what a great way to look at it. You know, what an awesome way to look at that mindset is like, instead of it being like, oh, I'm hungry, right? I'm so deprived, right? He's like, yeah, I'm losing fat. I'm looking the way I want to look. This is it's mm -hmm. working right now. You know, it's, totally. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what do you think about? I I don't know if it's like a theory, but more of like an idea that sometimes you're hungry or having cravings if you're lacking a certain vitamin or mineral. What's your take on that? You know, that's a that's a good question, and I don't know if that's more of an urban myth right yeah, or i don't a, know if that's a real thing or not yeah or if it's just you know something people came up with to justify things you know and i i honestly think more so towards the latter you know um because like it's it only applies to foods that usually you see only see it applying to foods that taste good it's like oh i just needed chocolate i was like on my period and i just needed chocolate because my body needed whatever it was right and that's like one it's like one percent of your daily allowance of chocolate you're like oh i needed i needed this because i was low in this and i'm like it doesn't ever seem like 
you know, like, oh man, I was just, I was really low in potassium. So I really needed to down some asparagus or I really need to down some um, spinach. You know what I mean? Do you ever hear that? Like right, yeah. you only hear it as like chocolate or whatever, right? I've never heard it as like, yeah, I was just so low in vitamin C. I just, I needed to eat an orange. Like I've never heard, like, and that would be a looser one. <laughs> you know, I still haven't even heard that, right? So I don't know. I don't know how much truth there is to because I don't, I'm not seeing people like ravenous and pulling over for, for, for potassium, you know, <laughs> or zinc, like vegetables with zinc in them. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. I'm only seeing it apply to chocolate and things like that. So I don't know. I don't know if I really believe it. I would have to, you know, I'd, I would need to research it to actually know if that's a thing. Is it, I, I imagine it, if, if we could do it with uh, macronutrients, there's no reason why it, is it possible with micronutrients? I don't know. <laughs> to me, to me, I would say maybe that one you should just get your hormones checked and see, or get get your labs ran and see where your your deficiencies are, and just then get uh, a vitamin. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, if you're working with like we have all of our athletes take uh, a multivitamin, so we've been using Vitaforce for like forever. Um, it has mostly everything in it. And that's why, honestly, that was, I was looking at like my magnesium the other day too. I was like, I'm getting my magnesium in it, but not as much. You know, I'm getting like 15% of my magnesium in through the vitamin. And that's why I've been taking it, just doing my magnesium test. It's not <laughs> working as well for you. <laughs> so, Still works for me? Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. No, I've, it's funny having a lot of people. Me- have people messaged you about that? Um, yeah, I've got a few. I, I had people message me what kind I'm taking, but I said it exactly on the podcast and I showed it. It's called <laughs> magnesium. I don't know how else I can see a L M <laughs> it's a drink mix. I even showed it on that. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I would just, if, I were, if I were you, I'd just rewind it, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the kind of, it works for me. Yeah. We need to get some funny questions that are, that's funny. But, <laughs> um, so as far as the satiation goes, um, another thing could be your, you know, I, I get a lot of this, these questions on fasting too and satiation and fasting. I don't think that it has a huge impact on your satiation. I think what it does is it has a, it gives you a, a your mindset timeline is you're not going to eat till 12. So because you've made that mindset up, if you're not going to, you're not going to eat from eight o'clock PM till 12 o'clock PM, right? You've made that it's already set in your mind. You're not going to do that. And so because of that, you kind of already know and you're mm-hmm. kind of already, okay, this is the task for the day. And after a while you get used to it. Yeah. I don't think it has a tremendous impact on satiation. The argument is, oh, well, you're getting more volume in smaller window of period. And that's why you're more satiated. I'm like, well, then you're also to counter that you're also getting significantly less volume for a longer period of time too, to, to counter that argument. So that, you know, it's, there's never a, 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 a juice without a squeeze. Right. And potentially, um, worse workouts if you, if you train before noon, (laughs) I would say so too. I'm not a fan of it for bodybuilders because I feel like the, you know, and there's arguments against it. Again, there's always going to be that and there's going to be studies against it too. So I know that saying this before, but we're not talking about those studies aren't done on high level, high performing bodybuilders that are, you know, competing at the biggest stages in the world. They're always the same type of people that they, they have those studies on. It's like the 18 year olds in high school, I'm sorry, in college, um, you know, that are, who knows if they're even doing it hundred percent. It's like, it's, it's really hard to control that. Cause I mean, are you going to have a control group in a room for 12 weeks, like, and not leave that room ever and doing this fasting to see, you know, it's, it's just not, that's not how it works. So, um, yeah. So those people, obviously if they, if they lift any weights from in those 12 weeks, they're probably going to see a benefit from it and they might even gain muscle on a fasting diet to throw off. But if you get someone like, like an Ashley or someone who's like a, a top level Olympian, and then you don't feed them for, you know, 14 hours straight in a day. Will they net more muscle or lose more muscle? Well, there more goes into it, right? You also got to look at, okay, how are their workouts affected? Because they're already at that close to that maximum amount of muscle their body will hold at this point. So how much, how easy is it to lose once you reach that level? I think it's a lot easier from what I've seen physically, like in athletes that I've worked with. Once they reach that, that, I guess you want to call it your, your base, right? You have your, like your base amount of your base weight, your base amount of muscle. So like right now, this is like my base, my base amount. It's like my, you know, I work out a lot, but it's not like I'm super intense and serious. Um, I eat good, whatever. It's my base. It's like, I can hold this pretty easily. Right. But if I get very serious and I reach, I guess you'd call this just like my normal amount. And if I reach my, um, my aggressive amount where I'm like super diligent about it, I'll come right back to this really quickly. If I, if I come off of that, right, I got to be super perfect on my diet, eating 
perfect proteins, eating perfectly, working out with extreme intensity, right? Well, if your performance goes down, how can I maintain that, right? How can I maintain that output? So I do think that there's a factor in there that they don't look at, which is output, right? How a lot of times in the gym, you're getting your results, like people not getting results or just not working out hard enough and their output isn't there. That will go down the, the harder your diet is, the lower your calories are, that will go down. So there's always going to be that offset. Okay. Yeah. Are you dieting someone too hard where they can't perform? And then is their performance hindering their overall progress? And what is better to give them more calories and optimum performance or less calories, worse performance and lose more fat potentially, right? So right. It's, it's a hard, it's a hard um, thing to, to figure out. Right. So I wasn't, I, I wasn't even thinking of it as a muscle loss perspective. I was thinking more of like an energy and being distracted by being hungry perspective. So it's hard, you know, it's hard to concentrate on working out if you're hungry. You know, and also if you don't have the energy for it and like even those people that have like low blood sugar and stuff like that can feel lightheaded and then they try to train. It's probably not the ideal scenario to train heavy and and get some intense gains. Right. So I wasn't even thinking about the muscle loss perspective, but I was thinking more like energy and just being distracted by being hungry. And, you know, as good as I am about staying on my diet and um, as not hungry as I am. And, you know, I'm very satiated most of the time. I don't even think I could do fasted, honestly, because that's when I'm the hungriest is in the morning. Yeah. You know, I get hungry in the morning. That's when I'm hungry. So like, I can't imagine just waiting till noon to eat anything. That seems miserable. Yeah. So I would, really I would miserable. say for someone like you, who's at that level we talked about where you're like close to your peak, right? You're like, okay, I've been, everything as perfect as I can for X amount of time. My body is basically has as much muscle as it's going to hold type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, For someone like you who start just all of a sudden started fasting, I think that you would potentially lose muscle because of, yeah, the, the long period of dieting where you're not going to have any amino acids in the, in the system as a, as a constant amount, but two, because your performance, like you talked about would be less. So it's, it's hard for you to maintain that muscle if you're not working out as hard Mm -hmm. for as long of a period. Right. So I think that there's two reasons it would actually potentially lead to muscle loss mm-hmm. depend you know i think it's going to be case by case dependent and i don't think there's ever going to be enough of a case study of high level athletes that are going to want to do that you know like i mean i don't think you're going to find 12 bodybuilders that are 250 pounds to like prove this works or doesn't work for fasting right they're yeah. going to be like no i need it. i'm not going to yeah do that. they're like no i gotta prep for the show i'm not yeah. messing with that. <laughs> like, i'm not gonna, I'm gonna mess take any with. chances yeah it's just not yeah. who would want to do that as a bodybuilder who's worked exactly. up to that level you know because yeah. as a bodybuilder like even these high level bodybuilders, it's really funny. People are like, yeah, I'm going to put on like 20 pounds this year. And I'm like, dude, call, let me know at nationals how that went. You know, you'll see a high level bodybuilder. I, the only high level bodybuilder I've ever seen do this was uh, Kai Green and Kevin Lavronia. That would actually like get bigger, like from Olympia to Olympia, like where it's a significant weight. We were like, whoa, he actually put on muscle. There's one year Kai put on like 30 something pounds. That was it's yeah, that was like no one. No one ever did that. Right? And then Kevin Lavronia would would like grow into shows because he would travel with the band, so he wouldn't take his workouts that seriously for like four or five months a year. It didn't really work out much. And then, so he would kind of grow into the Olympia. So you'd see those one-offs. But as a whole, when you look at these bodybuilders, and we're talking, these guys are doing everything they can, like every single meal they make count for a whole year. And they go from like Olympia stage to Olympia stage. And it's like, oh, he made so many improvements. How much more does he weigh? It's like, oh, he's two pounds heavier. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? He's... He's like 280, so he'd gained less than like 1%. Maybe he gained 2% of his body weight from year to year, but he looks that much better, right? So it's not like you're gaining a ton of muscle unless you're like, you know, Nick Walker will probably be one of the ones that he's been growing pretty quick, but he's young and he's still growing into his full frame. But um, he just seems to be like growing, like like you could probably hear him growing. <laughs> like just like listen in closely, you'll hear him growing. But it's it's pretty rare. So I think that we need to look at that too. Uh, when we talk about, you know, how much you're going to be growing once you're advanced, you know, and so holding on to that is a more important thing at that point while you're in a prep diet, you know? Totally. So um, going back to the energy uh, statement, you yeah. know, I think, I think a lot of times competitors get cravings because they're just craving energy because they're so tired from their workout because they're so depleted maybe. Yeah. And um, they just want energy because food equals energy. And obviously there's a great way around that. And it's called caffeine. (laughs) Caffeine is great. It's a great (laughs) appetite suppressant. And I think it, it definitely helps, you know, when you're in the weight room, um, as well, you know, especially if your calories aren't very high 
it's not something that I would suggest doing for a long period of time. It's not like I'm saying substitute all food for caffeine. But if you're like, you know, last few weeks of prep, uh, caffeine's great. Which, by the way, I also had a lot of people ask about the thermoforce because we mentioned it. And then people, it's it was in the link of the, the video. Yeah. Um, but go ahead and say it again because I had a lot. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of messages about yeah, thermoforce. Okay. And it's going to be in the description of this one, right? Yeah, it's always it's, in the description. It's we a it fat in. burner, which can also be an appetite suppressant as yeah, well. Yeah, fat burner, thermogenic. Uh, um, it has a good, had good appetite suppressing effects to it as well. We've been using it for... Since 2013, we started using that one. So it's been, gosh, yes. 10 years using that almost. Link in description. Yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, I, the only thing with me with supplements is I've, I've been in this industry. I've been in the supplement industry since I was 16. I started working at Nutrisport and then GNC. And um, there's just been so many supplements that I've seen over the years, like, come up and then they find out they don't have in them what they say they have in them. And it's just like, it's a, it's not. As, if you look at the big brands, it's not going to happen with like the big brands. Right, they get sued. Yeah, but it does happen. And so I was just always like, when a, when a brand is willing to send me their lab tests, then I'm like, okay, I can I can support your brand because I've seen it. You know, I've seen what it has in it, Claire. So that's why I used that one years ago, and I still use it because mm -hmm. of that. It just it has what it has. Yeah. Says it has it. There's a lot of you know similar type of thermogenics that are great. Um, but yeah, we just use that when I trust it. So yeah. it's been a success for a lot of years. So you can just do also old fashioned coffee, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's great as well. Dutch bros. Yes. We that's your that. thing, huh? Damn Dutch bros sponsorship. Dude. We need it. Dutch bros. Dutch bros hook a brother up. <laughs> I think that's probably like, if you looked at like, gosh, they, they know Kimber's car. Like when they know her drink, which they know they kind of know by too. So I don't nice put her there. on blast. They are. They're super nice. You know what though? When they're making your drink. Is this, maybe this is me. Maybe it's me being a rude thing. I don't mean to be, but they always like want to do the, you know, they don't want to like talk to you, but they do the like, hi, how are you doing oh, today? Oh, small talk. Yeah. Like while they're waiting for your drink, they're like, what do you got going on today? And I was like, you don't really want to know. Like, <laughs> you know, but, but it's like, you see, you have to do that like small talk to your drinks. Ready. I don't, I'm not a preferred of that. Is that just me? No, I don't like it either. Okay, I especially yeah. don't like it in Ubers and stuff. I'm just like, I'm just you don't like it in Ubers. You know, I hate it. You know what? I find it interesting at in Ubers sometimes. Sometimes I was with, okay, I was in this Uber. And then ever since then, I was interested in these guys because some of them are, it's, so this guy, okay, so the, the Uber that got me interested, he picked me up in like a Mercedes. And it was like an okay Mercedes. But it was weird for a regular Uber. I was like, that's kind of too nice for like an Uber car, right? And then I saw him driving and he had a, a Rolex Submariner on, right? So it's just like a, I don't know, $13,000 watch, something like that. And I was like, that's weird. Unless his watch is fake. Why is he driving me down the street for like $8, right? Like it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. And so I was like, yeah, I was like, this is a nice car. I'm like, so you do for work? Like you just Uber? And he's like, he's like, no, he's like, I'm a doctor and I own four different, um, it was like, what are they, emergence, those emergency places? What are they called? E, they're like, are they, e they're like the fast urgent ones. Urgent cares. Though. Urgent cares, yeah. And he said, yeah, I got all these nurses. And I was like, dude, what, why do you do this? He's like, he's like, he's like, I'm a lonely guy. I live up in the mountains by myself. So when I get done with my work and I don't have to work much anymore because I just, they run themselves. I just like to come out and meet people. And I was like, Aww. What a sweet old man, you know? It was a sweet, nice guy. So we just talked a little bit, and he was just like, yeah, hopefully I'll get you. He's just such a sweet guy. I had no interest Aww. in the money he's making, just just wanted to talk to people. That's cute. It was, right? Yeah, he was a sweet man. Aww. So ever since then, I'm like, I wonder what this guy's got going on, you know? Yeah. And I've run into some funny, some interesting people. But what I will say with the Ubers, and you got me turned on to this, I do hate coming out and saying I'm in fitness because then the questions come. Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> oh, man, bro, I, what do I do to get big? Like, <laughs> how do I train to get abs? Or like, oh, the best like you're not going to do it. Whatever advice you give, they're not going to do the it. The best ones were was like when, you know, when I was like really into bodybuilding and I was in like my peak shape and then it'd be like some guy who's like, you know, he's overweight now or whatever. He's like, oh, yeah, I looked like that when I was, when I was <laughs> like, dude, you never, you never, yeah. look, you know how hard this is to look? I can't even maintain it. <laughs> so it's, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Said, Those ones are the best. And then you'd be like, whoa, well, well what did you do? You know, <laughs> like, you know, I just, um, I, I, uh, I worked at a golf course and I was constantly, you know, going around and fertilizing the grass <laughs> and yeah. it'd be something like that. And you're like, yeah, you got that, that physique from, yeah, okay. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Uh -huh. A lot of yeah. hard work there. That's, yes, for sure. But not the same result. That's why I stopped. <laughs> I stopped doing the advice thing at dinner. Cause when I go to dinners with like friends or something like that, they always want that, but it's unfortunate. It seems like when people don't invest in it, they don't take it seriously. Yeah. But when someone like says, Oh, I'm going to do a transformation. If someone came to me and said, I want to do a transformation, I just gave them a diet. I would think the adherence is pretty low. 
But when someone invests into it, the adherence is really high. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's just like a, they make that jump, that financial commitment. But when you have like friends and whatnot who just want to diet, like they just never stick to it. It's, yep. Yeah. It's weird. And you get, you'll get those, those in January, you know, you get those buddies of yours or whatever that are like old friends or whatever. And you're not, I know I'm going to take care of them, you know, they're my friends, yeah. but it's like, I know how it's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> We've been through this before, Yeah. <laughs> but it, maybe it's cause they're not satiated. Maybe it's because they're not hydrated properly or, or, put, or blending their protein shakes. Very true. <laughs> so going quickly back to the caffeine thing as well, like whenever you do have coffee, if I found that like if somebody is craving chocolate, the coffee is a great substitution because I can't remember the chemical in both of them, but there's a similar one. Hmm. Sam knows the answer. If Sam's you guys know, let me in the comments section below. But th there's um, an ingredient in both of them that can kind of – it can satisfy you without having chocolate because coffee is basically, you know, calorie free. Just make sure you get the sugar free syrups. <laughs> but um, that can very much cut off any cravings and especially sweet cravings, too. So not only are you getting your energy taken care of, your energy cravings, but your sweet cravings as well. Yeah. And if you guys are, if you're fortunate enough to have a Dutch Bros in your area, I feel like I feel, I feel like people think we're secretly paid by Dutch Bros. Where <laughs> if you're fortunate enough to have one in your area, they have um, asked them for their sugar-free list. They have I think that's why one of the reasons they're doing so much better than Starbucks now. Mm -hmm. If you look at them, like there's a all the Dutch Bros I go seem to be strategically placed like right next to a Starbucks, like really close. Aggressive <laughs> aggressive business model, but um, it's working for them. But this, their lines are always busier now than Starbucks lines. It's crazy. But I think it's because, you know, Starbucks has like two flavors of sugar-free stuff, three flavors, whatever it is. And, and yeah, it's just kind of boring at this point. Yeah. You know? but Dutch Bros is the new and exciting thing. Yeah. And I think their coffee's a little better. But they have they have like 10 different flavors of sugar-free stuff. They have sugar-free chocolate, which is awesome. Um, and then the... Um, what was I going to say? What else? Oh, they give you their, they give you the milks and stuff for free. So if you do oat milk or almond milk or whatever, it's like they don't charge you another dollar for it, which is which is nice, you know. Yeah, you so. know, I I also like Dunkin' Donuts, but there's not a lot around here. But I'm I'm a Dunkin' Donuts person too. I think their coffee is really good, and you get a lot for cheap. Yeah, you know, there's sugar freeze don't taste like any sweet because though, they know? they use more of an extract than mm -hmm. a sweetener. So they're sugar-free syrups are just like extracts and you have to put your own sweetener with yeah. it but maybe it's better that way yeah maybe so you but know that's the only thing but i do like their uh their, their value there is better so i love duncan again we're getting some i love duncan donut mm. in the comments <laughs> yeah i'm not so much a fan of starbucks it's just like boring and it, overpriced it phased out for me yeah yeah so anyway with that um any other tips that you've done so you know one of the things we should post more i'm gonna post some on my youtube channel of um that ice cream thing and i gotta i gotta get you them in that ice cream we keep talking about it yeah why why in the winter though am i trying it I, but i, I do want to try it i do it like every night <laughs> yeah next time you come over we'll get you one um, okay we'll get we'll, we'll do one because it's like a it's a process it is a process but it's just it's so it doesn't make any sense we're gonna do a video of that um and then uh the, another one of the tricks was bcaas that were blended up with um, amino acids on them as like one of those ice ice drink type things Yummy. Um, that one was really good too so a lot of these like low volume um i'm sorry high volume low calorie foods you know um, if popcorn if you want to do popcorn instead of your carbs like that's a great, great option Ooh, too and sugar-free jello oh yeah. i love sugar-free jello <laughs> so good so it looks like and if you are struggling with your diet like look at your diet you know how high is it in fat you know you only need to reach your minimum amounts for health of fat so if, if you're reaching your minimums so a lot of times when I have someone... Yeah, why don't you say what the minimums are? Yeah, so it's it's going to be percentages of, of weight. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's not a, a really high number. Like, it's in, it's in the 20s for most people. So most bikini competitors, that's like in the 20, right? 20 range. So that's like a minimum. And if you're doing things like uh, fish oils, you can even lower that a little bit, right? So, because um, you have your, your EPA, DHA fats in there and all that stuff. So with with um, fat content, that is takes up a lot of volume. So if you're reaching your minimums, let's say... Let's say your diet has um, 80 grams of fat, 70 grams of fat in it, right? But you're always really hungry. Talk to your coach and say, hey, can I shift out some of these fats for some carbs or some more, maybe even some more protein? Um, because you're already, you're not, you're not anywhere near your, your minimum. So for example, let's just give you that example. Let's say you went from 70 grams of fat or, or um, to down to 25, right? And you had your fish oils and you're making sure you're staying healthy and getting all your, your fats in that your body needs. Based on your weight, you can figure that out. So, okay, you have, let's say, 50 fats to work with. I think it's 45 in that scenario. 
but 50 fats to work with. That's like 450 calories. If it's, it's nine calories per gram. So it's like 450 calories, something like that. So 450 calories from fat at 50 grams is not that much food. 50 grams of fat in terms of um, calories or in terms of um, volume, that'd be like three tablespoons or so of um, like coconut oil. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of volume. So you get three tablespoons of, of coconut oil or oil or whatever in peanut butter. It's going to be, you know, a little bit more in peanut butter. Um, but we have 450 calories we could work with, right, in that scenario. 450 calories from carbohydrates would be, so it's four calories per gram. So we're talking, what is that? Um, 100 grams, 100 and, gosh, 110 grams of carbohydrates. That's a lot of carbs to, to add into someone's diet for the same amount of calories, right? When we're talking volume-wise of, of rice or something, that's like, that's a lot of carbs. That's a, that's a big amount of carbs, you know? So you could switch, you know, th- three tablespoons of coconut oil or, you know, two bowls of rice type of thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a totally different scenario. And maybe you're going to be a lot more satiated because you took that method. And it's just something that you need to talk to your coach about. Maybe your diet is, it's, it's not set up right for you. Maybe it's exactly right for you. Maybe you're super full on that, but it looks like not the macronutrient is as important in terms of satiation, but in sh- the volume is going to be the, the leading factor of that. So I personally have, you know, for the last couple of years been doing um, more geared towards the, the lower fat for that reason of having a lot better adherence to my diets when people are lower in fats. Um, I haven't had any health issues. So that's always the argument. People are like, oh, if your fats are in the whatevers, it's going to be lower in health. It's going to mess up with their hormones. And I'm like, dude, I do more hormone testing than probably any two coaches combined. I, I actually can guarantee I do more hormone testing than probably any two of the big coaches combined because we literally do it for like 50% of our clients throughout the year. It, it, everyone does it. The amount of problems we run into after someone's dieting is like, is so micro percentages of people that I, I can't even associate. So I'm like, no guys, I do the studies. <laughs> I do the, I have, we have the volume, we have the, the, the labs, we have everything. I can show you how it's not hurting people. So, um, so that's just something that people always just like jump to. They're like, oh, if your fats are at, your fats are lower than 50, you're going to crash your testosterone and crash your hormones and your estrogen is going to go. And I'm like, dude, I, I could, I'll sh- like, I could show you a <laughs> hundred labs where that hasn't happened, you know? So, um, yeah, is, is it more likely the lower the fat is probably, but just, it's a simple test, you know, it's a test it, let's see what happens. <laughs> you know? So some people are going to be more sensitive than others, but it's, it's highly unlikely for, for, from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's just different based on because our, they're athletes or whatever mm-hmm. than, than based on what the, the norm is, but it's not happening to our people. So, yeah. 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 And I think if I were to say one last thing before signing off, just make sure you realize the difference between a craving and hun- hunger. And just know that regardless if it's hunger or a craving, there are solutions to fix that problem. You just have to think before you give in. I know it's a compulsory thing. You just, you're hungry, you're craving, you just grab the first thing you see that's tasty. Stop yourself and think if this is going to hinder your pro- progress and if it's worth it, Right. Or if you should just, you know, find another solution like one of the ones we mentioned and not have that guilt and backtracking of your um, prep. So, yeah. Well, there we go. There tips go. from tips of, from one of the most adhe- diet adherent persons. In I the mean, world. I don't know about that. You give me too much credit sometimes. I don't know, actually. You're pretty diet no, adherent. No, because I don't even measure my meat. Like, I'm, I'm very loosey-goosey yeah, with but it. Lo- it was, I think one time you put it in a thing and we looked at it, it was like 4.2 ounces but for four. No, I was like, when you say the person that adheres to their diet the most, I think of the person that counts every little broccoli thing, eats it at that time. Like, I'm not like that. I'm loosey goosey. Yeah. I but get, I'm consistent. You can say I'm very consistent. Okay. There Ashley, we go. Ashley's very humble. So when, if you say Ashley's, a, this is the thing about Ashley and I'm, 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 I'm turning the corner with her a little bit on it of getting her to be more like, Oh, I did do that. I am a badass. Would you say like, Oh, you, you're the most winning pro of all time. You'd be like, well, yeah, but bodybuilding's harder. It is. <laughs> yeah. So it like, is. It's you deserve it, Ashley. You've done very good. You deserve the credit. Well, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep giving it to you. Thanks. Thank you. Arthur agrees. We're <laughs> making a video. We got to make a video documenting all the wins. So yes. it's down there and, and recorded, but yes. it's not the same as bodybuilding. I don't care what you say. It's not. And um, just, you know, another point to make is like, you know, I don't think 
I, you know how some loosey goosey with the, like I will have like a coffee with almond milk in it. I'm not really going to count those 30 calories. Like yes. I'm not that crazy with the diet. Cause yes. if you say that people are going to think I'm like, Oh my God, I c- is that, I can't even have a taste of that five calorie drink. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. that crazy with it. Sure. I'm, I'm just very consistent over a long period of time. And I don't let myself go. There are the, there yeah, we go. There are the, weighing broccoli people i do get that yeah i'm not like that i'm just like good enough to me whatever <laughs> throw the extra floor yeah, in when on I was, there when i was prepping uh and doing shows i would eyeball my veggies too like i'd eyeball it like that's oh, a yeah. cup you know and at the end of the day the net difference might be like half a cup you know so i, I was like it. yeah whatever so anyway guys with that we will talk to you later thank you so much for watching ashley how many weeks out are we from the olympia um 3.5 crazy Woo. Crazy, huh? We'll be there soon. I'm wearing an Olympia jacket. Ooh. Ooh. And it's in Vegas, so yeah. yeah, it's just a local show. No big deal. And I'm doing <laughs> a I'm doing a uh, Road to the Olympia series on my YouTube channel. Search Ashley K. Uh, oh, sorry. Ashley Coltwasser. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my YouTube's under my real name, Ashley Coltwasser. Instagram is Ashley K. Fit. But um, I'm doing a whole Road to Olympia series, and I just yeah. posted a video today. So That's awesome. Yeah, so we're more to come. We're going to have one every... Every Monday to Olympia, so. Ooh, it's exciting. And you're part of them. Yes, so. it's fun. Woo. I love being part of this. is my, my, it's, it's my, it's definitely my favorite part of the year. And it's, I go through the same thing as you do. Like, uh, like, it's just like triple checking, right? You're just like triple checking, triple checking, triple checking, looking at, okay. Like, you, it's so different now. Like, when you're here at the office, you know, it's like, you'll be like walking across and I'm like, I like, it's just different how I look at you and stuff. Like with yeah. everything, like if you're wearing a tank top, it's like, look at your shoulder. It's like, it's so funny. Cause I'm just like, you just keep triple, you know what I mean? You just triple check yeah. and triple check. And you're like, no, yeah, you're no, no, she's good. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's good. Second, <laughs> second guess things like, oh no, wait, oh no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yep. So the mind games, right? Yeah. It's the so funny. Games. It's a fun time of year, but it's definitely, it's the funnest, but most scary, right? At the time of the year. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, a lot of like, you just gotta be so on point. And the so. cutoff was yesterday. It was the last show for bikini. So, that's so it. I, how how many official competitors do you know? The last time I checked, it was in the fifties. So I think it's less than it's around sixty. I don't know the even total. with the points. People? Yeah, the three people got in with the points total. A really cool showdown. I think it's showdown. in the sixties. It might be. It might be low sixties. Because when I checked, like over a month ago, it was in the fifties. Yeah, it might be. But a lot of the well, the thing is, a lot of the same people kept winning. Yeah, but still, I yeah, mean, you'd so think that it'd bump up a little bit. But yeah. let's say about six, say about let's let's this, count this year, too much, I guess. Yeah, this so. year it it actually had potential of being like in the eighties, but this year, uh, for some reason, was the most amount of same people winning that there has been in the last like Great. four years. Yeah, Love it. I'm all for it. Like if you take the top four people who won, it's over twenty shows. So that's twenty. You know, that's twenty people who who mm. had to get in on points based on that alone. So there's a lot of people who got like two wins and there's a lot of people, well, not a lot, but there's a few people who got more than four or more. Mm-hmm. So it just made it, it made it Olympia quality control, you know? Yeah. I'm all for it. So That's what's up. <laughs> we, can't, we can't be going on stage with 80 girls. Yeah. So yeah. So next year we can get a couple more of your girls to step up and get your, get your four or five. And then we get it down to, you know, 30. Good to go. Yeah. I don't want to stand <laughs> that long backstage in heels. So do us all a favor here. Yeah, and then the, oh, they they shortened the time, right? The yeah, uh, I don't think they had officially made the announcement. Yes, but they are going to shorten the yeah, time. Yeah, so somewhere forty five seconds. Yep, there you go. So there it is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.